Hi folks, Dr. Bob McCauley, part five of my cancer protocol. If you thought part four of my cancer protocol was difficult, part five is much more difficult because this is the part where you have to change your diet. This is a really hard thing to do. It's definitely the, the hardest thing, the greatest challenge you will have in curing yourself of any disease, and in particular cancer, the emperor of all diseases, the toughest disease that uh, challenges us more than any other one, cancer. So you really got to change your diet. You really got to move. If you've already moved to a plant-based diet, that was part four. That's really difficult for people. Stop eating meat, fish, eggs, or dairy. I know that's hard. But to stop eating all cooked foods is extremely difficult. The only way to do this is in steps. If you try to do it overnight all at once, I have never seen anybody stop eating cooked foods and never go back to eating raw foods. It's, it's a very rare uh, event when somebody does something like that. Uh, it took me actually several years to transition from a cooked food diet to a 100% raw food diet, but I did it and the rewards are just amazing. And I never have to worry about getting any disease and I certainly don't have to worry about getting cancer. Now, I don't even like calling it the raw food diet because it sounds like another fad diet. You've got the keto diet, and you've got the South Beach diet, and you've got this diet, and that diet, and the Atkins diet, and every diet coming around. So we got the raw food diet. It sounds like another flash in the pan. So I don't call it the raw food diet. I call it the raw food cure, because that's what it does. It cures the body of any disease. Health is not only about what you put into your body, it, but it's about what you don't put into your body. So, you know, if you're getting up and you're eating f in the morning, for instance, you're eating a bunch of fried foods, and then later, you know, you start having your juices and all that, you you're really working against yourself. You have to stop putting those things into the body, and you have to start putting the healthy things into your body, raw fruits and vegetables. So this is, this is not an easy transition for you, but you gotta do it if you wanna cure your, your body. Now, I recommend a juice, I love juicing, um, and of course, you're always going to take some spirulina and chlorella with that. When I wake up in the morning, I don't eat anything. I, I usually don't eat until at least noon. So that's a long time for a lot of people, and they just can't take it. Well, this gives your body a chance to really detoxify because that's what disease lives on. It lives on the toxins, the things that don't belong in your body. And you got to get those out of there. That was what part three was about. I was trying to tell you how you got to get all this, the things that don't belong in your body, toxins, poisons. You got to get them out of there because that's what disease lives on. So, you know, raw fruits and vegetables, they don't displace their, displace their toxins in the body, whereas cooked cook foods do. And that's where all these toxins come from. And in particular, processed foods, fast foods, the kind of junk you get down at the, in the, in the, in the drive throughs uh, you know, uh, you know, fried foods. These don't have any business in, in the body. I always think of it in terms of like, you know, if you can't go to a tree or a bush to, to get the food that you want to eat, you probably isn't food. Like for instance, you know, is there a pizza tree? No, uh, there's no pizza tree. Uh, there's no fried food tree. There's no sloppy Joe bush. No, but there are apple trees and there are tomato plants and there are arugula plants and spinach plants. And what I do is I go out and like, for instance, in my garden all summer, that's what I'm eating from. I eat like 90, 95% of the food I eat during the summer comes right out of my garden. I'll go to the store and I'll get some fruit and that kind of stuff. You know, I'm in Michigan, so we're big, you know, we're big on apples and peaches and pears, uh, blueberries, you know, so I get a lot of locally grown stuff. I have a few fruit trees of my own. My friend's got a big orchard, you know, so I get a lot of those. And then I do a lot of juicing, again, always taking it with spirulina and chlorella. And in the evenings, I have a big salad. Now, that's the way I do it, but any way you can get a raw food into your body is a good way. It doesn't matter how you do it. You just not only got to get those foods into your body, and believe me, when you make a nice big tall juice, you're going to love it. It's nice and sweet, and it tastes good, and it's refreshing, and it's cleansing. You know, your body's going to love that, and you're going to love it, drinking it down. It, they don't taste bad or anything. You don't. You don't have to have a, you know, something that tastes so awful. But and then you take some spirulina and chlorella with it because you want the chlorophyll and you want the the protein. Make sure that gets into the body very efficiently. And then, like I said, at night I have a big salad. But what you got to do is not only eat these raw foods, and, but you need to stop eating the cooked foods, and that's the most difficult part. Part five of my cancer protocol: stop eating cooked foods and transition to a raw food diet. 
this is really hard to do. This is going to take you some time, but I know you can do it because you want to beat cancer. You want to be healthy again. Who doesn't want to be healthy? We all want to be healthy. Nobody ever says, boy, I wish I was sick again. No, we all, we all want to believe we're healthy even when we're not. So you can do this. you got to transition. It might take you a little while to do it, but if you've got cancer and it's really advanced, you got to move on it. Transition to a raw food diet. Dr. Bob, I'll see you next time.